How are you, sir? Good, good morning. Good morning. You look terrific. How are you, sir? That, there's your the zoomness of our lives these days, right? I know. I've got the home office all going off. The kids are uh, homeschooling, so uh, hopefully we'll have some peace and quiet, and uh, we should be good. You look good. You, you're. So do you. This is looking good. I love the scruff, by the way. You know, for six years, <laughs> I haven't had scruff because David, my business partner, has had a beard. And so they always wanted to be able to clearly tell us apart. <laughs> and so this has been like the first time where I've been actually, fuck it, I don't need to shave it forever. <laughs> or for as and, long is as it, I want. and is it going to stay? I think so. I really do. We'll Why see. not? How you Why doing? Not? I'm doing well, thank you. We're uh, we're out in Long Island and uh, watching things thankfully get better. And uh, thank God, man. Thank yeah, God. I mean, it's crazy stuff. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start. Um, my friend Leonard Steinberg used the word shilling with me the other day, so I'm gonna shill a little bit. I love um, that. Because uh, I, you know, I know who you are, and and uh, I've read through the bio and all that. Um, you're the principal. You're a principal at the agency. Yeah. Um, incredibly impressive organization. Um, you're selling property in Beverly Hills, uh, Bel Air, Homeby Hills, Brentwood. I mean, it's the best of the best, right? And with your partner, you're averaging from 2015 till now what most brokers would give a kidney for. You're averaging 250 a year. And in 2017, you did over a half a billion dollars. Before I even get to the, the fun questions, what does that feel like? That's a great question. It feels, it, it feels absolutely amazing. It's humbling. You know, for two guys that came here with not a single person in our phone book uh, to have been able to grow our business on this sort of steady trajectory going up and up and up, um, has always been a dream. You know, I never really want to be in business where I plateau. Right. Uh, I always want to find that I'm doing better and better year on year. And David and I have been able to do that. And so it's a very fulfilling feeling watching our business grow as our personal lives grow and our families grow as well. So it's been an amazing, amazing journey so far and excited to see what's to come. It's a good ride. It is. It and is you a must, good ride. And you must truly love it because, you know, nobody's achieving this level of success unless you wake up and just feel like you're not working every day. You just love doing it. That's the key. I right. mean, for me, you know, people are like, how do you work so hard? And, and, it, and it may or it may not sound cliche and it probably won't sound cliche if you love what you do as much as I do, but it doesn't feel like work for me. I love real estate. I love to negotiate and I love people. So put those three elements together and you have my job. That's and so it. I get to go out and work with amazing people, learn from those incredible people and grow um, as a person every day. And I just, I love what we do. Now, is there a team or it's the two of you with obviously support? Are you driving a team? Is that how we do have a team? Yes. I mean, now our team is very small. It's myself and David. Um, we have a director of operations, Michelle Fakara, who has been doing this for over 30 years. And she mm -hmm. is without question our backbone. And without her, uh, we couldn't do what we do today or be as successful as we are today. Sure. And that goes for everyone on our team. We have Alana, who's head of uh, sort of marketing day to day and an assistant to David and I. And then you have Fred, who sort of micromanages day by day, helps us with everything um, and is phenomenal. And then we have Alex, uh, who's a buyer's agent on our team. So predominantly works with buyers. And that's really it. So we, we, we like to keep it lean and mean, um, and we like to keep everybody incentivized. That's right. um, you know, when we make money, everybody makes money. And so sure. we never want to cut it so thin that people are decentivized. So we keep it this way for a reason where everybody's pushing forward and we're all having fun whilst we do it. And you're not losing the control. You're keeping the, the that, that's it. Exactly. Thank that's, you very much. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Now, there are some, you know, there are some milestones, there are some records and, and reading through this. And I'm a New Yorker, so I'm pretty jaded. And, you know, knowing people who are doing rather 
well in New York, but some of these numbers had me going like, you know, this is, crazy. It, it's, it's crazy. You know, you, you represented a seller for $120 million sale in Homeby Hills, the manor. Um, you represented the seller on a $72.5 million sale, you know, in the Trousdale area of Beverly Hills. And, you know, as you go through the stats, you start getting into numbers that are still mind bending at the, at the lower end of the stats. I mean, the upper end of the stats is rarefied air. Um, you know, it, it's got to it's got to speak volumes to what you and David are doing, the level at which you do it, the market, all of it. It seems like it's just a perfect storm, but it doesn't happen without you guys working your tails off. No, it's listen, it's hard work. Um, and for anybody, you know, I, I feel like the real estate industry has such a low barrier for entry. You know, almost anybody can become a real estate agent. And I almost feel like our show, interestingly enough, can throw people off where it appears maybe easier than it actually is mm -hmm. to make a paycheck. But the reality is that this is a very cutthroat industry where if you're not in this 110%, in my opinion, you might as well not be in this at all. Because for me and for David, we're all or nothing type of guys. And you have to go into this business head first um, and you have to be ready to give it whatever it takes. And I think in any commission driven business where you are writing your own paycheck, so to speak, sure. you are a CEO of your own business, um, unless you're willing to, like I say, go for it 110%, you're never gonna be able to grow because there's so many agents today that are living paycheck to paycheck and they may close a $5 million or $10 million deal and then they go on vacation for two weeks. Um, and that's what I see as complacent. And so for us, um, you know, we like to celebrate those deals closing, don't get me wrong, but that's not a time to be complacent. That's a time to get to the office the next morning even earlier. That's a time to roll up your sleeves and to recognize that sales is cyclical. When you're riding that wave, you have right. to continue to ride it. You have to continue to beat records and you have to continue to work harder each day, harder than the day before. And if you can keep that mindset and mentality and have fun whilst you're doing it, then in my opinion, sky's the limit and you deserve to be successful. And I feel like we've, we've done that and we're gonna continue to do that. Keep your foot on the gas and make hay when the sun right. is shining because it doesn't always shine. That's true, man. And look, I come from a very, and I've done real estate since I was 16, but there was a period where I've worked in very cutthroat sales rooms, almost boiler rooms where you're cold calling. I mean, you know, and the mentality there is you're only as good as your last deal. And, you know, it's that mindset and mentality in real estate. We're showing houses. We're offering something to these people that they're going to live in for the rest of their lives. It's the biggest real estate investment of their lives, maybe the biggest purchase of their lives. Sure. It has to feel special for you so it can feel special for them. Um, and again, you really have to want it. And if you actually identify all of those successful brokers, none of them have had it come easy, right? Every single one of them are prepared to go to any length to get what they want. And I feel like that's what makes them successful. And we all have that ability. It's just how hard you want to get it. And do you think being in those boiler rooms at the beginning of your career set your mind to just take the mentality of the sale, the client you have now could be your last client. And so you just keep pushing and pushing. Thousand percent. I yeah. think certain things that happen in your life early on set you up for the future. You know, I learned very early on that every time I hear the word no, I'm closer to hearing a yes. Instead of getting thrown off by that no and, and, and sort of losing my spirit, when sure. I hear the word no, I get even more excited to find the yes. Sure. Um, and in real estate, that could be a door knock, that could be picking up a lead at an open house, that could just be showing a house, that could be a listing appointment. And so my mentality is always, where's the next deal? Where's the next deal? And having that positive mindset and keeping a level of energy and positivity that's out there um, and putting out there what I want to get back, you know? And I feel like so many of us might be having a shit day, 
And then we're going to push that onto the next person. And that just ruins that energy flow. Whereas if you put out what you want to receive back and you keep that energy high and you maintain that level of energy, people want to be around that. It's contagious. Absolutely. And you have to maintain that with your success. And people want to surround themselves around successful people. And it's, it's contagious. And that's work in and of itself before you even show. It is. That it mentality is. takes a lot of work. And but mindset. Yep. That's right. All right. And, so and, and actually even harder now, whilst we're going through what we're going through, this is a time more important than ever sure. to have a healthy mindset. Um, because there's so many of us that are sitting at home in fear right now, and that's not doing any good for anybody. No. And so it's a time now where you really have to train yourself on structure and schedule and working out to stay strong. And, and you have to do certain things in your life to maintain this positivity or your positivity. So now's a time that we can get into that another time, but you really need to, to focus on mindset. So I know what it's like in New York and, and, you know, for lack of a better badge, we're the epicenter. What's it like in LA? It so like it's bad, you know, and, and, and unfortunately for the New Yorkers, you're absolutely right. You know, when we watch the news, we're hearing the same. Uh, and our prayers are of everybody in New York and all around the world. Um, it's, it's not pleasant here. You know, Cal California has 40 million people. And yeah. truth is, we're on a stay at home order till May 15th. There's rumors that that could go through June 1st. Um, but let's be honest, whether it's May 15th, June 1st, June 15th, we're not going back into our normal lives the day that the stay at home order is lifted. Um, we don't all just wake up on a Monday morning and say, okay, back to work. This is a shift in the world right now. And so we're going to have to shift with it. Um, we're dealing with it accordingly. We're observing all of the social distancing rules, the stay at home orders, and we're getting creative with the way that we work and how, the, how we work. Um, and actually, we're very busy right now and uh, we're, we're, we're doing a considerable amount of business. So we're very, very blessed right now. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Bottom feeders all across the board. What are you, what are you finding? Definitely bottom feeders. Um, I don't think we're truly going to see the bottom feeders come out for probably four to six months. Um, I think the market's going to continue to shift. And I think a lot of the people that are watching out for deals right now, uh, of course, with, with things like this creates opportunity. But I think there's so much uncertainty today that people want to wait and see what happens. I think come four to six months from now, a lot of those developers that have very toxic debt paying 12, 13 percent, uh, you know, they're not going to be able to weather the storm. They're paying 50 to 100,000 a month on carry. And once those developers start hurting, the bottom feeders will appear. Uh, and uh, that's where deal gets, deals get done. That's what happened in 2008. And that's probably what will happen this time around. Liquidity has never been as important as it is right now, like in 2008. And Cash is a, king. And there's know? a lot of people sitting on the sidelines waiting. And there's a lot of people that got very, very wealthy in 2008. You know, a lot of funds um, that were able to buy this debt at 50 cents on the dollar, especially in New York. They were buying these projects at 50 cents on the dollar and their pro formers were selling these condos at 2,000 a foot. And by the time they were finished, they were selling at four, five, 6,000 a foot and people were cleaning up. But, you know, in a weird way, and I hate to say this because it's at the expense of so many people's lives, we needed to slow down. We needed a shift in perspective. We needed to appreciate the things that we weren't necessarily appreciating. And I think that this is definitely a wake up call that we need to respect mother nature. Um, and it's our calling to, to respect our environments, our loved ones, our families, etc. cetera. Um, but we will come out of this and we will shift accordingly. And it's again, it's those that are willing to put in the work that will come out of this successful and sadly, people will agents at least will get pushed out of the business too. So, you know, it's a time where you have to really work through this. Sure. What's uh, your motivation is radiating through this zoom call. What is keeping you motivated and what's keeping you grounded? Family. You know, I, I got a wife and two children. Um, I do this for them. I do this for all of my family. You know, I, I come from an amazing family, but raised by a single mom. 
Uh, and I just don't want my own children to ever have to worry. That doesn't mean I don't want them to have to go to work and earn right. their, their keep. Um, but I, I want my family to never have to worry. I never want anyone to go without. And ultimately for me, I want to keep growing as a person, as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a son. And so this mindset and this energy and my business, everything comes together as one and I want to continue to grow. So you have, that's my motivation. You have single momitis like I do. I was raised by a single mom as well. So it, it, it puts your mindset. So what's it like to be a dad in a pandemic? By the way, a single Jewish mom. Fancy uh, that. <laughs> single Jewish mom also. Hey, there you go. And I'm an only child. Top that one. And I'm an only <laughs> child. There you Boom. go. Boom. You know. You know That's how it. it goes. That's it. Um, I didn't know you that. Know there, you it goes. Goes. Um, there you go. How is it to be a father during the pandemic? Well, I will tell you this. I am a father. I'm the head of dishwasher. I'm the, the wooden floor cleaning king, the Clorox king. Um, and... But, but jo joking aside, it's amazing. You know, I haven't spent this much time with my children since they were born. Sure. And it's actually quite a sad thing for me to say because it's only now I'm realizing through the slowing down um, how not absent I've been. I get home most nights before bed, but, you know, we move fast. We move fast, especially yeah. in this industry. And I've, I, I've missed a lot of time. You know, I often leave the house by 7, 7.30, and I'm home by 7, 7.30, and I put them to bed. Sure. And now I get to spend all day with them. And I have to tell you, it's absolutely amazing, yeah. stressful, um, and there's a lot going on, but my kids are my life, they're my, my, my everything. So it's, it's a special time from that perspective, Maybe. for sure. Same thing. I said at bedtime the other night to my daughter, I said, it is completely reasonable that I'm going to miss a lot of this. Oh my God. And I said, and, and who would have thought that four weeks ago? And we spend a lot of time together. I yeah. said, but this is a different level. I said, and this is going to be a memory. How old, how yeah. old are the kids? And in six. How about you? Uh, 14. So amazing. You know, yeah. Amazing. And, they're, and they're great kids. So, <laughs> you know, I, I left for a showing yesterday, which we're allowed to do now. Mm -hmm. um, with obviously guidelines in place, but I was kissing everyone goodbye and I was genuinely like, I'm actually really gonna miss all of you right now. Like, this is kind of weird. I'm going out, I know I'll be home in an hour, but it's kind of weird. It's totally um, weird. But it's, it's special, you know, yeah. I, I, it's, I can't explain it. I can't describe it. It's extremely special and it warms my heart when I think about this time that I get to spend with them. I just, I love it. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not, it, that's one of the things that won't change. You, yep. you'll, you'll figure it out. I hope so. so. That's got to be the best part of being in isolation, I would guess. Thousand percent. And yeah. I really thoroughly enjoyed my wife. <laughs> you know, one of my clients who's been married 17 years said to me the other week, he goes, I'm going to finally get to know my wife. Mm -hmm. And I sort of burst out laughing and I thought, yeah. I mean, I'm coming up on 10 years of marriage, May 14th. Um, and my wife is my best friend, hands down. But, you know, I'm sure, and we keep hearing this, you're going to see a lot of babies in nine months and you're going to see a lot of divorces. Um, but my wife and I are having fun. You know, it's, we, we've really become more of a team, you know, and certain things. And I know these are, are first world problems, but we didn't have a nanny or anyone to help us around the house for the last six to eight weeks. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's been fun coming together. There's a big list of chores on my fridge that, you know, I have Monday through Friday and it's fun. Like we laugh, we have a great time. And again, I don't want to change that. It's, it's, no. it's fun times. No, I hear you. Are you guys uh, Walmart, Amazon or uh, Target people? Amazon and Target. Amazon and Target. What, uh, aside from keeping things going at the agency, are you doing fitness? Are you doing education? Are you doing a little of both? Oh, both. I mean, for me, I've really occupied this time to be busier during the daytime with my time than even if I was prior. I mean, during the day, everyone knows I'm in my office. I come out for lunch. We tidy. We do this. But I mean, I start my day at 6 a.m. I'm running five miles by 7 a.m. and I'm doing three circuits. And by 8, 8, 15, um, we're having breakfast together as a family. Okay. By 9, I'm in my office every single day and I'm keeping myself 
very busy and if it's not working i'll be doing an instagram live if it's not instagram live i'll be doing a zoom meeting or a webinar and i feel like it's a great time to be giving back um and so this is one way that i'm able to give back and 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 stay connected with people mm -hmm. um and i feel like it's a really important time to be doing that how much of the how much of this do you think is going to stay when the green light goes on the zoom and the virtual and all of that it's a great question I hope a lot because people are more connected right now than they've ever been. Um, and there's a lot of it that I really enjoy. You know, I'll sit even again, even if I were to have a free half an hour, you go on your best friend or your sort of mentor or someone you look up to's Instagram, they've done an Instagram live in the last 24 sure. hours. You can watch that and get knowledge. And it's great. I mean, look right here, I have pages and pages and pages of notes of other people that inspire me and i just feel like this is a great time and i hope it stays for that for that reason i printed something out that that a friend of mine in uh, in new york uh, had on their instagram page and all that and i gave it to my girlfriend and she read it and she goes did you write this and i said no she yep. said, this big i said i printed the whole thing for us because it's 21 pages you got to read this yeah and people are having and it's probably uh, powerful stuff right it, it, it's you know what it definitely definitely keeps your mind in the right place. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best thing you've eaten in isolation? Funny you should say that. We were discussing that last night. And I'm not really a big fish guy, but my wife has been cooking some meals. Dover sole was the entree and the appetizer was artichoke. And they made this uh. most amazing uh, side with it, which was this sort of mustard sauce. So the, the, the whole thing together was unbelievable the artichoke we grilled artichokes yeah. last night they were great with, yeah yeah with the mustard sauce that was great Did you, yeah 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 it's it's uh it, it's i've cooked 36 37 dinners in a row wow we've tried so not you're to the cook huh yeah you we like tried not cook? to duplicate any dinners uh, my girlfriend's a terrific cook but you know i'm working the stove more than anybody and uh it's it's been great it's it's That's been unbelievable meals. Yeah, it's unre unreal. Uh, figured yeah. out for a Jewish kid, figured out how to make my first brisket. So there you go. Oh my God, there yeah. you go. Fantastic. So I'll, I'll send the recipe. Um, which leads to another fun question. Favorite pizza topping? Oh, wow. Pepperoni and jalapeno, for sure. All right. That's the, you're, you're a guy from, you're an LA guy. By the way, I was out with a bunch of New Yorkers before this happened, and we went to one of my favorite uh, pizza restaurants called Pizana. And I'm just a kid from London, and I'm sitting there, and I start eating my pizza with a knife and fork. Oh, God. And I'm with a bunch of New Yorkers. Oh. I start getting looked at like I have just slept with one of their girlfriends. <laughs> I mean, oh my the God. look of terror. With that, I got about an hour lecture that eating pizza with a knife and fork is an absolute no 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 and i guess was there something the mayor or something of new york that got seen doing that and they got ripped apart when we're done i'm going to send you the link of the youtube of john stewart ripping That's apart it. bill de blasio and That's you gotta it. just you gotta clear the decks it's one of the funniest things because Please he sent it, it to me because they just kept bringing it, it up yeah he took it so personally and it was so awesome but it's true as kids, you know, we walk around folding it in a paper napkin or a paper plate and the oil is dripping and yeah. Fun, huh? But they're still Send friends. That to me. But they're I'd still like friends. That. That's good, okay. good, good. That's great. Where's, um, where's your happy? Well, first of all, let me ask you a different question. What'd you want to be when you were a kid? That's a great one. I wanted to be an astronaut um, or I wanted to be a, uh, um, what do you call it? I wanted to be an astronaut and a veterinarian. 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 I always say that word wrong. Are you a dog um, or a cat guy? I'm a dog guy. See, this, this get this interview gets better and better. If you <laughs> went cats, I would have went all the way off. Where's um? Where's your happy place in LA? Or it doesn't have to be in LA. So my happy place, and no one can believe this because I am so hyperactive, is a lake out in Ojai. Um, and I like to sit there for five hours, get on a boat and go fishing. Nice. My happy place is fishing on the lake. Uh, and I just absolutely love it. That's great. That's great. Um, we'll get to the business questions in a second. What's the first thing you plan on doing without a mask 
when the green light, to your point, or in a semblance of the green light goes on? Hugging my friends, hugging my mom, and just holding them Where's for a your good mom? minute. My mom is in LA, um, but we're trying to keep somewhat of a distance for yeah. her for her safety and for ours. But yeah, it's tough time in that regard. Yeah, but we wish her well. Um, Thank you, mate. Business question. So you said there were deals going on. Deals are going on. They really are. I mean, we have right now uh, seven deals under contract, which equates to, I want to say between 45 to 50 million. Um, and what I'm personally seeing is the kind of two to five million dollar range still seems to be hot. The high, high, high end has definitely slowed down, although we've seen some massive sales in the last two weeks. I mean, we just saw one for 36.5 uh, close in Bel Air, another one for 45 million close in Bel Air. There's 100 million under contract in Beverly Hills right now. Deals are still happening, but what I'm personally seeing, although we have deals higher, we, we are two to five price point right now is rocking. And I think people are still out there that have strong banking relationships that are taking advantage of these low interest rates right now. The interest rates are crazy. Ridiculous. I had and just refied, by the way, before this happened on my own house into like a 2.36% loan with 10 year money. I mean, that's outrageous. And you think the banks are going to get a little tighter as this goes on? Do you think they have a choice but to go tighter? They have to go tighter. I think those that have stronger banking relationships right. are going to be okay. Um, but I think generally speaking, the guidelines are going to become a lot tighter without question. They already have and they will continue to do so. Have you changed the business model in six weeks? Yes, that's another great question. I mean, look, it's been for the last seven, eight years, um, a seller's market. You know, sellers have demanded 20, 30% premiums and buyers have paid it. And now what you'll see is a shift where it's going to become a buyer's market. You know, buyers are going to dictate what they pay for a property. Sure. Um, for us, we still are predominantly a listings business. I mean, we want to have control. We want to hold the listings. I think our business will change in the sense that, you know, you're going to still come across very unrealistic sellers. And I think this is a very important time to turn business away because if a seller is unrealistic and going to waste your time, time is money. Let's focus on the sellers that are real that actually want to sell. Um, and, and I think you're going to have to get a lot more specific with who you start to work with, buyers and sellers, and make sure that they're real because time, time is money. If you could take the last 15 seconds, if I could take the last 15 seconds, take the video clip and put it on a t-shirt, I would do it because yeah. I, full, I fully believe time, the value of time is skyrocketing. And in New York, it's been a buyer's market for a while. Sellers right, which I've heard. Yeah, sellers being unrealistic about what they, what they can get, what's reasonable, and buyers have been pretty much been able to do what they want to do it's right. only going to get, it's only going to become more of a buyer's market coming out of this. That's right. And I think New York had had a supply and demand issue. You know, totally. the market was saturated. There was a lot of product and there was too much product. And, sure. you know, that, that's what will dominate buyers or sellers market based on supply and demand. And LA was starting to see that pre-coronavirus too. Not as much, but it was shifting that way. Again, as agents, we're fortunate enough that we get to make a choice on which way we're going to go. And you either shift with the market or you don't. But for us right now, as agents, we need to stay creative. We need to think outside of the box. We need to shift with the times. We need to stay proactive and we need to all stay three steps ahead. Otherwise, we're all going to fall five steps behind and uh, we're going to all suffer if we don't do that. So we have to stay unified and, and really push forward together. And you think coming out of this, it's the market of the two to $5 million. Do you have a lot of new development that's in? Because I read the stat, your, your listings are a billion and a half dollars worth of listings. Which they are, we have that, correct. But, but no, I, don't, I think for right this second, mm -hmm. two to five is where it's at, at least for us personally. Sure. Um, I think as time goes, no, I think actually the high end is going to be on fire because again, once this settles down, a lot of those extremely wealthy people um, are either going to have made money from this or not, but they're going to see it as a buying opportunity. 
And so I think that a lot of big deals are going to go down. They might go down heavily discounted uh, into the buyer's favor. But I think in the next two to five, six months, you're going to start seeing the 20s, the 30s, the 50s start popping left, right, and center. With free money, money's free. Money's, that's the point. There's, there's no barrier to it. Right. So would you rather put it into a real estate asset and park your money there or keep it in the stock market when things are as volatile as they are? For me, I'd rather bricks and mortar weather the storm and see it incline through five to 10 years versus not knowing what's happening with the market and not really having a solid expectation of what to see. Absolutely. A friend of mine who is a mentor of mine, Howard Lauber, who's the CEO of Douglas Elliman, says put it yeah. in real estate because you don't get to watch the value of it every single day. Mm -hmm. You just have it. That's the and, truth. And Howard's and a very right. smart man. It's, he's a very smart man. It's not someone to bet against. So coming out of this, what do you want everyone to know and what's your biggest takeaway out of this? Clearly, you're a family guy. I can see it in your face. But what's, what's the big takeaway from all of this you know, upheaval? The biggest takeaway for me is to appreciate what we have. Seriously, whether it be family, whether it be a roll of toilet paper, whether it be some Lysol disinfectant spray, um, but, but joking aside, we have to, as humans, really appreciate what we have in life because it is so easy, and I'm guilty of it, to want more and more and more, and nothing is enough, but to just stop, appreciate what you have, cherish what you have, and slow down. That would be my best takeaway from everything that's happened. Slow down and appreciate and have gratitude. We were talking about it last night. I was out in, in, in my yard here. It was about 8.30 at night. The dogs were walking around and I was raking the lawn. And my girlfriend said to me, why are you raking the lawn? And I came inside and I said, I thought about that. I said, you know why? She goes, why? I said, because it's my lawn. And there you go. I said, and, you, know, I want to, you know, I want to appreciate the grass and I want to appreciate the property. And I don't need to wait until the green light's on for the gardener to come. I said, you know, you want to appreciate what you have and, and enjoy what you have because it's the shortest life we're ever going to have. Mm -hmm. And it goes like this. So well, we are on the same page, my ab man. Absolutely. absolutely. You are awesome to have taken the time to do this. I really, really appreciate it. I, Likewise. We, I was getting set up for this parenthetically and I watched the, um, the James Corden and you and Taya, and I got to tell you, I'm watching the whole thing, and you were just outstanding. Just oh, absolutely outstanding. He seemed James like Corden is amazing. And by the way, I tell you on that skit that we did, you know, he showed up. I mean, that day, there was no rehearsing. There was no scripts. It was just go. go. And I mean, those cameras never went down. Uh, unless we were like walking upstairs and they needed to get in front of us. It was just, the guy's a genius. There's a nothing genius. else I can say. He's an actual talented genius. And it was very, very fun. Yeah. And there's part two of that, by the way, which you should watch as well. Well, it was about two o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to watch part two. But I'm Yeah, gonna part two is with J.J. Reddick, the basketball player, and James oh. Corden, which is also pretty funny. The YouTube link is on its way. I, I forgot one question. Oreo, yes. I've asked everybody the same question. Original, double stuff, or mega stuff? Oh, my God. Original all the way. you got to keep it original. original. guy. Yeah. You're a real gentleman and very gracious to take the time. Thank you Such so much. Such a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Likewise. In person. Take care and thanks bye -bye again. Now. Yes, take please. Take care. Bye-bye.